How you doing guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the new Actros. Yay! Now I just thought that I'd do a little bit more in depth on the interior. Uh, show you guys some more of the infotainment system, the multimedia display and uh, just have a look, a little look around the cab. Now it's largely uh, unchanged but uh, there is a few little touches that you know we need to uh, we need to go over and uh, you know and what we're also going to do is go over some of your concerns as well because uh, there's been lots in the comments um, a lot of people showing uh, concerns about uh, the the multimedia uh, the mirrors and all the technology so it'd just be good to speak to someone and uh, yeah we just get to the bottom of it. <laughs> So this is pretty much Mercedes Actros as you know it. So yeah, same same thing. We've got the also got the cabins here, and we've got the uh, where are we? Up, 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 up. There we go. Hello, 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 hello. So yeah, then we've got the uh, the sunroof. We got lighting. Lighting is different, isn't it? Because we've got um, all pretty blue lights, and we've got all your switches here, which. Uh, uh, pretty much the same, you've got light in, sunroof, um, and then you've got your radio controls and your night heater. The additional switch here switches on the, um, the mirror cam when you're in bed and you've got the mirrors cut and the, the curtains closed. So, yeah, so uh, ooh, a little bit close there. Ooh, there we go. Uh, there we go. And then over here, we obviously have the mirror cam and we have. Uh, the multimedia cockpit and then over here we have the other mirror cam so yeah it's uh, it's mostly unchanged but let me come behind and we'll have a little bit of a closer look so here we have the new Actros and as you can see it's it's largely the same you know you got your storage bins down there you got your cup holders you got a few little tweaks like uh, up here we have the Android CarPlay and is it Android no App Apple CarPlay Android Auto uh, USB C's that plug in there, so you, you get it on your infotainment system. Uh, and then over here, we have the electronic handbrake, which is all new for the Actros. Uh, it's got a few functions where you can you can do different things with it. Um, obviously, you can you can pull to turn it on, push to get, take it off. Uh, also, it will automatically release when you uh, hit the accelerator. Um, it's also got a hold function on it where um, if you don't want to fully put the handbrake on. Uh, if you brake uh, down to a standstill as you would normally uh, and then just give the brake a quick short jab or wash your stationary, a hold function will come up on the dashboard and that will hold indefinitely until uh, you touch the accelerator again. So it's like a, an advanced heel hold function if you like. Uh, very good. So over here you have your uh, multimedia screen here. And then over here you have your dashboard. We're going to a little bit detail with these. Uh, there you have mirror cam, and just down here you have your mirror cam controls. So you have your heated function, and you have uh, you switch it into like wide mode, and uh, you set the camera set the cameras up with these switches and stuff like that. But it's 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 all pretty straightforward. And what a lot of people have been uh, saying about is um, what about in rain and fogging up? Well. In the rain, uh, because the camera is very close to the lens, uh, you get a lot of, um, you know, it's like looking through a motorcycle visor. You you tend to look through it, so you don't get as much build-up. So the, the, it, it, it does look much better than, uh, than just looking through a traditional mirror. And also a lot of people have been saying about fog and, uh, you know, misting up and stuff like that. Well, these cameras do have uh, a heat function and I, th I do believe it automatically comes on when it's like five degrees or something like that um, but yeah you, you do you don't have a button down here as well uh, which will allow you just to there is that one there yeah that's the heated button so that just allows you to uh, put it on manually if you need to 
Uh, we've got the engine start button down there. We've got buttons down here. Um, but yeah, let's have a little look at the infotainment system and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're a little bit more in depth. So here we have the multimedia screen. This is uh, not the screen behind the dashboard, but the uh, the one slightly to the left. I've had to close the curtains uh, because uh, I was getting a lot of reflection. Uh, it was difficult to, to, to see through the camera. Uh, easy for me to see, but um, not through the camera. So this is your home screen that you get. Um, so yeah, you just get that through clicking this button here. Um, and then these are obviously your first options. These relate to what these buttons are as well. So these, these are physical buttons down here. These are like quick buttons, if you like. So uh, yeah, not nice and easy. Um, so there, obviously that would be your climate control. That one there would be operation. That one there would be your status. And then you have your nav and, and music options and stuff like that. So what do we have first? So over here we have climate. Nice and easy, set your climate, you can set your timers here, so uh, you know you can set it before you come to work in the morning or whatever. Set your temperatures, set your fans, nice and easy, look, look, this isn't difficult is it? This is child's play. And then obviously you've got your, your screen, your recirc, uh, and then your night heater. Easy peasy. Uh, and then uh, obviously you just come back, come out of that. And then next you have operation. Now, obviously, you've got your lift axles, you've got your rock, uh, you've got your heel hold, you've got your alarms, uh, your, all your regen stuff. So, you know, it's the super simple stuff. You know, people say, how can you hit buttons driving down the motorway at 56 miles an hour? Well, you're not going to need these buttons. The buttons that you're going to need at 56 miles an hour, they're here. You know, they're here. Down here, uh, 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 oh, uh, oh, silly thing. No, not that bad. Uh, there, 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 we go, there we go. Wait, there we go. Down, down here. Look. Yeah, the buttons you're going to need at 56 miles an hour. They're still physical buttons. All right. Um, so you also have level control. So you can do your level control. Um, you can do it. You can do it on touch screen. So, uh, oh, there we go. We're going up. Oh, we can we can reset level control. Come on, there we go. So we can just reset level control, or I can also do it from the steering wheel using the swipe buttons. So there we go, and obviously you got timer control, set timers, and you have settings. Settings really easy. You got your assessment settings. So your predictive powertrain control, you can turn off, turn the inter-urban off, which is like your B roads and driving around towns and stuff like that. And just keep it so that it works on motorways. Uh, so, and then after that, you've got your active brake assist. You can switch that off. Traffic sign assistant, you can switch that off. I, I, although I don't know why you would turn these off. Um, and then you've got your display settings. You've got language, units, screen brightness. You can do the uh, the instrument, the head unit, uh, driver mirror cam, you can adjust that, your brightness on that. Co-driver mirror cam, again, change the brightness. What else have we got? Displays off, so you can switch this display off. So it, is, it you know, it just, just doesn't show. Uh, and then you've got controls, you've got keyboard controls, touch sensitivity controls, acoustic operating feedback controls, you know this th th you don't have to know all this stuff to be able to operate this vehicle this is just menus and settings if you like you know most people won't use these uh, control uh, do we do that yeah we done controls uh, and then you've got audio you can set your uh, navigation traffic announcements your phone to connect your phone up uh, and then obviously you've just got your date and time you can set your date and time through here so Nice and easy, nice and nice and simple. Um, so yeah, we've done that. We go back to home. Uh, that was operation, wasn't it? We've done that. We can swipe with our fingers again. We can go through status. So there we go, look, you have uh, all the tire information that you may require. Uh, you have your axle information. 
Uh, maintenance. No, no, no servicing. Obviously, this is a brand new vehicle. It's just, it's, it's not, not required. Uh, in any event, no active messages. Nothing's wrong. Nice and easy. All right, home. Then we got lights. Well, we can do so much with these lights. Uh, we've got interior lighting where we can adjust all these maps and and and, and all all sorts, all sorts. And then you got your exterior lighting where you can turn your auto lights on and off. Um, uh, I, I believe an optional extra on this one as well is uh, high and auto high and low beam, which is which is super useful. I've used that before, and that's really good. Um, so that's really easy uh, lighting. And then what else have we got? Oh, we've got navigation. So here we have navigation, and this is your TomTom -tom maps that you know any TomTom -tom user is is completely. Uh, used to nice and simple very easy to use and that's the truck sat nav as well so you know yeah avoid your bridges and your weight limits and everything else although not to be relied upon as per normal uh, and then you've got phones uh, you know you can connect your phone up blah de blah you can go through uh, contacts everything else radio I think we went through some of this on uh, uh, on the other video but you, you've, you've got your radio it's um where is it yeah it's, it's DAB FM look so you know you can, you're gonna have your normal AM uh, but yeah no fantastic so many radio stations to choose from uh, super simple to use you've got all your settings you can turn your traffic announcements on just like a super simple radio just touching the screen though uh, and then you have your Bluetooth media which is obviously all the media that comes through on your phone. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well, so every, anything that's dis displayed on your, your phone will be displayed on here. And then what have we got? Uh, so yeah, this is your, your, your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is where you'd go if, 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 if you'd want that. And then obviously your uh, Connect. Uh, and this is uh, messages, outbooks, uh, for emails and stuff like that. Um, and this connect is also going to be where you where, where apps can be in, installed. Um, so you're going to have uh, Mercedes-Benz apps, uh, which you could have on there. Um, obviously, they will be uh, available on like the Mercedes-Benz app store, if you like. So they will be verified. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. That's you know super simple. Um, and you're also going to have like third-party apps on there as well. You know, you're not going to have your, your YouTube and your, you know, Waze and WhatsApp and stuff like that. Um, you know, that, that, that won't be on there. But, you know, you will have authorised third-party apps on there as well. And that is pretty much that. You know, that, that is it. Obviously, you've got your quick buttons up here. So you can, you can do your, your, your heights and lift axles and, you know, super, super easy. Uh, you know, there, there, there is a lot of trepidation about this system, but oh, I, I just, you know, I, I've not, I'm not massively experienced with this, but it's super easy, super, super easy. Right, let's go and have a look at the cockpit one. So, here we have the cockpit view. Super easy, super, you know, it's just so easy to understand. Um, so this is like the, 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 the super view version, if you like. Um, you will get a lot of uh, stuff displayed on here for the PPC, powertrain, predictive powertrain control and rain, lane guidance and uh, the uh, active cruise control, stuff like that. That will all be displayed down here. And then obviously over here you have your fuel gauge, over here you have your add blue and then over here you have your rev counter and obviously your speedometer. So super simple, easy to, to, to understand. Um, so on your right hand, on the right hand side of the steering wheel, you have a trackpad, and you can switch between these three areas. Now, if you go over to the right, you've obviously got Bluetooth control. Uh, you can look for media, so you can have radio on there, and then you have your tachograph stuff. If you come far over to the right, if we get the camera to come right. Camera, can you come right? Uh, there we go. 
camera right. And then we've got several things we can scroll here. So uh, that is uh, this area over here. And what we're on at the moment is uh, brake pressures. And if we scroll down, then we've got like engine temperature, uh, oil level, okay. Scroll down again, oh, I went twice. And then you've got like trip stuff. Uh, and that's like fuel consumption and miles per gallon and stuff like that. Uh, you will see, if we get the camera to go around again, we do have uh, an engine warning light flashing up here, but that's because we got the um, we got the engine off. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's super simple. You got your sign recognition, so the camera picks up a sign, uh, a speed. Well, don't 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 focus on my hand. So yeah, a, a speed limit sign down here. Look, um, the camera will pick up on on that outside, and uh, yeah, the, the dust dust. You know, it's super super simple, just like that. Now for me, this is where things get super exciting. So if you hit the cog button on the steering wheel, this is for your uh, cruise control and for your active cruise control. And it shows, you know, you can set what, what, what distance you want between the car and front. Hit the cog again and you come into the predictive powertrain control. Now, as you can see, this uh, control on the left, there we go, your upper speed tolerance, this is the same as the normal uh, uh, PPC on the Actros at the moment. Uh, and then you have your uh, momentum peaks, you can set that as per normal. And then your lower speed tolerance as per normal. Now the rest of it is where it does get really interesting because here, look, you can set your cornering speed, and this is for, uh, it will slow you down for corners, uh, roundabouts, and all, it, it knows where you are, it knows what you weigh. So, you know, you can set your cornering speed really, really handy. I love that feature, it's amazing. Although I do have it turned right the way down, because that's just how I like it. I don't want to like cover the brakes and like give myself a heart attack every time I go into a corner. So I have that turned right down. And then the next one we come along to, oh, oh. So there we go. The next one we come along to is your coast for route event. Now this is nice, this one is. This, the, you're just setting, setting it for how far you want it to coast. When you're approaching a roundabout or when you're, you're coming to a stop or a give way or anything like that, you can just tell it how far you want it to coast. So there we go. That is pretty much the infotainment system. Oh, there's one other thing I need to show you. So if you come over to the other screen over here, you can change, you can completely change this view here. Okay. So if you come across to the other screen, I think I've not done this yet. So this is like, this is new to me and just demonstrating to you how easy this is to, to, to use. I've, I, is it in operation settings display? Uh, ah, display style, that's what we want. Now we can switch it to classic. I think that's what it's doing now. I didn't see what I hit. Yes, so this is doing, this is performing a reset now. And this is going to a classic mode, which is what you'd typically see in your normal light. There we go, see? So this is classic mode, this is this is nice this is. So there we have, you have your rev counter, you have your speedo, you still have your signpost recognition down here, uh, and over here you have your rev counter. So, and, and then in the middle you have your your, your, your different like warning lights and, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, your more traditional setup, which is, which is nice. And you can navigate this on the steering wheel again, you can go into any one of these. Um, if you go into that one, look, you can, there we go. So you, you have all the information in there for your predictive cruise control. And if we come back out, if we go over to here, and there we go, you've got your, um, uh, all your trip information on there. So super easy to use. So if you don't like the, uh, obviously the, the, the new one, then if we go over here, where is you? There we go, back over to this one again, look back into settings, uh, displays, display style, advanced, that's, that's the one we like. There we go, so that's just doing a reset now. 
and then hopefully when it comes back on there we go look at that the advanced I love this one this is uh, this is my, my my sort of thing this is um, a lot of people think it's a distraction but it's not once you've been looking at it for 10 minutes it looks the same <laughs> um, and also you, you after 10 minutes your eyes train to look exactly where you need to look so yeah there we go and now I didn't show you over here what the buttons do but yeah pretty self-explanatory instead of instead of going through the home screen and going through these look click home there we go look. temperature settings operation so you can do your level control and all that sort of stuff you've got your information so you can go, you've got all your tire pressures and stuff like that and you've got your nav and then you've got your uh, you've connected to your phone so you've got your making a call and stuff like that uh, and then you've got your music you've got your radio and you've even got over here you've even got your volume controls so I don't want we're on a bit of classic I don't want to turn it up too loud, so I don't know if you can see that there. There we go. Oh, 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 there we go. Look. So yeah, you got your volume controls. So you've got. Whoa. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, all you've got is all your physical buttons. Look. Look. So anything that you need whilst you're driving, they are actually on physical buttons. What do we want? Oh, we want home, don't we? I've got an operating this now, looking through the screen of the camera. It's that easy. Time up here, connected to the um, uh, Bluetooth. Just, oh, I think. Oh, this is favourites, look. I like this. Equaliser. Oh, wow, look. I never even knew this was on here, look. This is good, this is, I like this. Uh, auto volume adjust, look. You can switch that on and off. What's this? Dis oh, I'll right, switch the display off. Look. Uh, how do I switch it back on again? It's got to be like on. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so yeah, I, I take it that's just favourites. So this this star down in this corner is just favourites. So as soon as you hit your favourites, you've got your, your quick stuff you can you can get to. So no, really nice. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to getting this, and uh, we're well, not getting it, but learning more about it. Okay, I've just turned all the interior lighting on so that I can show you the key. Now, this is the key. It's got many functions. Uh, it's obviously, you, you, the, there's no like key ignition now. You've got the, the button, the push button start, uh, and this just has to be in the truck. So you just place it in the, in, in the cup holder or, or anywhere else. Uh, it's up to you. But yeah, a few functions now on this. Uh, this top button here, you've got your light check. So you can, you can push this and do your walk around checks, check all the lights, you've got lock, and unlock uh, and you've also got a function in here where if you hold the unlock then uh, you know all the windows will come down and the sunroof will uh, will open so if you're approaching a hot truck then you know that's handed off but yeah nice key nice key I like that and it's it's, it's, it's very metal and heavy very nice anyway let's uh, I think what we'll do now is uh, we'll go and talk to Tim we'll go through some of your queries and some of your your fears and uh, yeah, I think we'll finish the video up then. And now we have Tim join us in the uh, in the cab of the new Actros. So, how you doing, Tim? Hello, Kev. And uh, you're going to go through some of the comments with us, and uh, um, yeah, we try and deal with some of people's concerns uh, that people have posted in the uh, in the comment section of my last video. Um, so, what do you do with Mercedes? I work for City West Commercials, covering yeah. the southwest of England, Mercedes Benz dealership, and I'm a sales executive for them. Excellent. So uh, you're going to be selling these things. That's the plan. Let's hope so. Brilliant. The technology's there, so excellent. Yeah, that's what we like. Right then. So first question, or well, not question, maybe a statement. Jesus Christ! Never mind about technology. How about Merck sort out the ride quality? So, have Mark done anything about the ride quality? Yeah, the two things they've done there, that we now fit two leaf springs yeah. uh, instead of the standard one, um, which also raises the ride height slightly to 
address some of the issues people have with a low front bumper. Yeah. Uh, also fit comfort springs to the vehicle now. Excellent. But I do know you've had a drive at a vehicle, did you? I, yeah, I did notice a big difference actually. I've driven some uh, some of the older vehicles and uh, yeah, I can understand where, where people are coming from with the, the ride being a little bit harsh, but definitely a big difference now. Next comment, Tim. Uh, was driving a 2017 Actros for a month back in June and the brake assist was verging on dangerous. One example, driving through our yard, uh, ground was wet, approaching metal road plates covering some uneven ground, truck slammed on the truck slammed the brakes on. Uh, I was just moving a trailer and did not have the seatbelt on, whacked my ribs off the steering wheel. Uh, so there, yeah, obviously uh, on about false positives were brake assist for. Like any technology, it evolves with time. The brake assist five, unlike the four, will still uh, pick up pedestrians, but it now combines the radar with an additional camera. So nice. that picks up people that will then perhaps freeze when they see a big truck coming towards them. Yeah. Um, whereas it might try to release the brakes before, we'll now leave that on. So hopefully this will alleviate some of the problems with the false braking with a yeah. two-stage system. Yeah, that's right. So it, it, you sort of combine the two, um, and obviously with, with the two with the two systems running side by side now and talking to each other, um, yeah, a lot less false positives and uh, uh, yeah, much much more accurate readings. Okay, uh, another popular question, Tim, or statement has been um, uh, a safety concern. Uh, too much attention needed to be looking at the screens. Highly dangerous. Separate switches uh, visible are far safer, uh, and it will be super easy when standing still, but not safe in the middle lane of a motorway. In a lot of ways, it's like a lot of new technology. Um, once you've used it for a day or two, everything becomes second nature. It becomes yeah. intuitive the way you use it. Where you might look at something, first time you drive a manual gearbox, you look down at the gears to make sure you get the correct ones. Yeah. But we soon do that sort of thing intuitively. Uh, and it's something, yes, it's a little bit unusual to begin with, but it soon becomes second nature for you. Yeah, and you, you, what you've got to realise is these screens have been fitted for a long time in luxury cars, haven't they? So They have. You know, it's it's not something new to Mercedes in particular. They've been they've been doing it for a long time, and you know I've done a, a fair amount of driving now with the new Actros, and you know it just gives you the information that you need. You shouldn't. It's not a distraction at all. You know, it literally within five minutes of being down the road, you're not looking at the dashboard in any way. You're just looking at what you need to look at. You don't fiddle with the uh, the multimedia and stuff like that. I just. I, I, I don't. I, I think it's a bit of a non-issue, to be honest. So do I. With the two screens, you operate the right screen with your right thumb, the left screen with your left thumb, and then there's also, when you get used to the system, there's shortcuts. So if yeah. there's two things, rather than have to keep fiddling through the menus, there are shortcuts where you can go from one screen directly to a second screen if they're the two most popular ones you use. Yeah, that's right. We've just been having a, a nice look at the uh, uh, the multimedia package and. You know, the fact that you can switch from your thumbs, you can use a touch screen. Obviously, you don't use, you know, things like a touch screen when you're driving. But, um, yeah, and, and you've got the, the, the quick buttons as well. Um, I, th I think a lot of people's concern is when you hit the, um, uh, the the quick button up in the top right that brings you to the switches, where you no longer got switches here. Uh, I think that's, that a lot of people keep referring to that as um, not being easy to do whilst you're driving. Well. I think most of those buttons, they're not something you're going to be using you know, whilst you're driving down the motorway. So you're not going to be lifting lift, lift axles at 56 miles an hour no, or dropping them or down here. Or repairing your phone or anything Yeah, like that. exactly, exactly. The buttons that you do need uh, are literally on these quick buttons, on our physical buttons. So, you know, I, 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 if people just need to use it, you know, if, if people can use a smartphone, then you, you can, no problem with this whatsoever. So uh, obviously a, another concern, Tim, has been um, uh, mirror cam and people saying, uh, you know, what, what if, what if uh, mirror cam fails and, uh, and what about if you, if you knock one off? Um, you know, people in particular have been saying about farms and stuff like that, but I, I don't really see that as, as a big issue because if you're going to knock that off 
doing a farm delivery, then you're going to knock a mirror off, aren't you? <laughs> yes, and they're much tighter to the body than uh, traditional mirrors. Yeah. The surface area is probably 10 times smaller than a mirror, Yeah. so in theory should be 10 times less likely to knock it off. Yeah. In my experience, most of my mirror problems have been truck to truck, and it's mirror to mirror. But of course, these are mounted higher than a standard mirror, yeah. so they should sail straight over the top. Yeah. Unless you've got two new shape actresses <laughs> <laughs> crossing over. It'd be pretty unusual, that. <laughs> exactly, but they do fold in as well. Yeah. So, because the surface area is much smaller than a traditional mirror, it folds in much easier than a traditional mirror. Yeah. So you should find that it will fold in tight against the side and then literally undo your window and fold it back out. Yeah, nice. And, uh, and when you do do that, um, if it's night time and you don't know it's folded in, you get a little warning that comes up on the screen, doesn't it, on the, on the mirror, just, just That's to let you know. exclamation mark. Yeah, just to let you know that it's folded in. Um, unlikely event that uh, you do knock one off, which is I, I think is pretty slim, uh, what, what would happen? What, what do you do? Well, Mercedes-Benz Service 24 call-out service will carry temporary mirrors that can be fitted. Yeah. The original bolt holes on the bottom of the door and a magnetic holder onto the top of the door. So you can fit an additional mirror to get you past that problem. Yeah. Um, uh, when I was uh, uh, talking to um, some other uh, Mercedes uh, staff, they were saying that that there's two types of mirrors, isn't there? You've got like a long stalk and a short stalk. Yes, for um, different width cabs. That's right, yeah. Obviously, you're going to have like your, your fleet cabs, which are, are going to have the, the, the thinner cabs, um, not quite as wide. So you, they're going to have the different sizes. And, and there's also, um, you get like the silver ones, don't you? The, like the ones that have got the chrome the cap chrome on finish, them. Yes. And the black ones. So there's only like four combinations. Um, and what they did say is on all the surface fans, they're going to try and cover the four combinations on the service fans so that um, if they do smash one off um, and you know there's no damage to the actual cab itself and the cab's not bent then uh, they should be able to fit one in quite a relatively short time. That's the idea, we've always got a backup plan for something like that. Yeah, yeah and obviously when all fails like you say they just stick a mirror on there, it takes five minutes to put one on there and you can get your own then. Yep.